Imagine this. It's dawn in a vast, untamed prehistoric world, around 50,000 years ago. The air is thick with the scent of damp earth and distant wildfires. A small band of early humans huddles around a flickering fire in a rocky shelter on the edge of a dense forest. Their faces, etched with the hardships of survival, reflect the glow of the flames as they share stories through gestures and simple words. One of them, a skilled hunter, dips a finger into red ochre mixed with animal fat and begins painting on the cave wall, a massive, bristly pig surrounded by shadowy human figures. This isn't just art. It's a tale of a daring hunt, a moment frozen in time that could reveal secrets about our ancestors' journeys. But what if this painting, hidden in a remote Indonesian cave, challenges everything we thought we knew about when humans first ventured beyond Africa? What if it hints at lost worlds, forgotten migrations, and intimate encounters with our Neanderthal cousins? Stick around, because we're diving deep into the prehistoric mysteries that shaped us, mysteries that could rewrite human history. By the end, you'll see how fragile our ancient story truly was and what it means for us today. Now, let's transport ourselves back to those ancient times, focusing on the raw, untamed landscapes where our story unfolds. Picture the African savannas stretching endlessly under a scorching sun, where upright walking apes, our distant kin, first emerged millions of years ago. Fossils like Artipithecus and Australopithecus, unearthed from Ethiopian and Kenyan soils, tell us that Africa was the cradle of hominin evolution. Chimpanzees and gorillas, our closest living relatives, still roam these lands, reinforcing that origin. By about two million years ago, early Homo erectus-like beings began wandering out, leaving footprints in places like Dimanisi in Georgia or ancient sites in Java and China. These weren't grand conquests. They were desperate bids for survival amid ice ages, shifting climates and predatory threats. Groups crossed arid plains, forded raging rivers, and navigated treacherous mountain passes, carrying crude stone tools and fire-making knowledge. But these early dispersals weren't the defining out of Africa event that geneticists talk about, the one that seeded the world with our direct ancestors. Fast forward to the heart of the Paleolithic era, roughly 60,000 to 50,000 years ago. This is when the pivotal migration happened, a bottleneck moment where a relatively small group of Homo sapiens ventured beyond Africa's borders. Genetic clues paint a vivid picture here. Africa's populations hold the richest tapestry of human DNA diversity, a mosaic that diminishes as you move farther away into the Middle East, Europe, Asia, and beyond. It's like ripples in a pond, growing fainter from the source. Studies of mitochondrial DNA and Y chromosomes, dating back to pioneering work in the 1980s, show that all non-African lineages nest within African ones. Nuclear genomes echo this. Diversity drops steadily eastward and northward, pointing to an African homeland for the last 400,000 to 500,000 years of our evolution. In this prehistoric setting, Envision that migrating band, perhaps no more than a few hundred strong, traversing the Sinai Peninsula or skirting the Red Sea during a brief window of milder climate. They weren't invincible explorers. They were families clinging to life, foraging for roots, hunting small game with sharpened spears, and evading saber-toothed cats and rival hominin groups. This migration wasn't a straight arrow. It was a meandering path, influenced by glacial cycles that lowered sea levels, exposing land bridges like the one to Sahul, ancient Australia, New Guinea. But here's where the intrigue deepens. Along this journey, these sapiens encountered Neanderthals, robust cousins adapted to Eurasia's colder climes, with their heavy brows, stocky builds, and sophisticated toolkits. The interbreeding, those moments of Paleolithic love, as some call it, likely occurred in sheltered valleys or coastal refuges in the Levant or nearby regions. 
Genetic analysis reveals that all modern non-Africans carry about 2% Neanderthal DNA, inherited from a shared event. Recent breakthroughs, drawing from ancient genomes, pinpoint this to around 47,000 years ago, with a window from 50,000 to 40,000 years. Think of it as a genetic timestamp. When sapiens and Neanderthals mingled, their offspring carried full chromosomes from each parent. Over generations, through meiosis and recombination, nature's way of shuffling DNA like a deck of cards, these Neanderthal segments broke into smaller chunks. By studying how fragmented they are in ancient and modern genomes, scientists can rewind the clock. In one study, high coverage genomes from sites like a Czech ridge of yellow rock, around 45,000 years old, and a German cliffside cave beneath medieval ruins, showed admixture between 45,000 and 49,000 years ago. Another, using diverse global samples and 59 ancient ones, confirmed the peak at 47,000 years. This timing imposes a ceiling on the main Out of Africa event because the Neanderthal genes spread uniformly across the migrating group before it splintered into Eurasian, Oceanian, and other branches. Whether you're from the frozen tundras of Northern Europe or the sun-baked outback of Australia, your sliver of Neanderthal heritage traces back to that same prehistoric rendezvous. It's a unifying thread in our story, reminding us that humanity's diaspora was a singular pulse, not scattered waves. But now, let's zoom in on a conflicting prehistoric puzzle that adds layers of mystery. Deep in the tropical forests of Sulawesi, Indonesia, on a jagged rock outcrop, ancient artists created what might be the world's oldest narrative scene. A massive pig with wiry bristles encircled by three human-like figures. Dated to at least 51,200 years ago via calcium deposits from dripping cave water, this artwork evokes a hunt or ritual perhaps a story of triumph over a formidable beast in a world teeming with megafauna like giant monitor lizards and dwarf elephants. The pig, rendered with ochre and skill, stands out against the cave wall, its form suggesting a moment of drama. Hunters closing in, spears raised, hearts pounding in the humid air. This isn't isolated. In Laos, fragmentary bones from a cave, tentatively sapiens, based on their slender features, lacking archaic brow ridges, date to 68,000 to 86,000 years ago. Imagine those early wanderers navigating misty karst landscapes, crossing swollen rivers during monsoons, only to leave behind subtle traces. In Australia, a site yields artifacts from 53,000 to 65,000 years ago, hinting at seafarers braving treacherous waters on rudimentary rafts, guided by stars and ocean currents. Chinese caves claim even older sapiens' presence, over 70,000 years. These sites predate the Neanderthal admixture ceiling, suggesting humans outside Africa earlier than genetics allow for our main lineage. How do we reconcile this in a prehistoric context? One possibility, errors in the timeline. Dating methods, whether radiocarbon for bones or uranium series for cave art, aren't infallible. Contamination or environmental factors could skew results. Picture archaeologists in those ancient caves, scraping samples under dim torchlight, much like modern digs, unaware of subtle shifts in sediment or glue preservatives from early excavations that muddle dates. Another angle, these sites might not be sapiens made. The Sulawesi pig could be Denisovan art, those enigmatic Asian hominins known from scant fossils but genetically linked to some Oceanians. Denisovans, adapted to high altitudes and diverse ecosystems, might have depicted their world abstractly or realistically, though evidence leans towards sapiens for detailed figurative work. Neanderthals, for instance, created symbolic marks, red ochre handprints in Spanish caves or eagle talon jewelry but rarely lifelike scenes. If Denisovans painted the pig, it opens a window into a parallel prehistoric creativity. 
groups etching their experiences onto stone amid volcanic islands and teeming jungles. Yet, if these are sapiens' traces predating the main migration, they point to earlier, failed out of Africa pulses, small bands that ventured out 70,000 to 100,000 years ago during brief interglacials, but didn't endure. Genetic whispers suggest minor contributions from such groups, undetectable in bulk, but perhaps influencing traits like immune responses. Mostly though, these pioneers met dead ends. Prehistoric life was brutal. Populations hovered at effective sizes of just 300 breeding adults, meaning total communities of maybe 1,000, including elders and children. Envision a Europe dotted with sparse campsites, where a harsh winter, a failed hunt, or a disease outbreak could erase an entire lineage. The German cave group, for example, included a mother-daughter pair and distant relatives linked to the Czech site, family ties that tug at our empathy, but genetics show no descendants today. They were a dead end, extinguished perhaps by climate shifts or competition. This fragility underscores the prehistoric narrative. Humanity's spread wasn't inevitable. Ice ages locked away water, creating land bridges, but also barren tundras. Mega herbivores roamed, providing feasts, but posing dangers. Sapiens groups innovated, better tools like blades and atlatls, social networks for sharing knowledge. But chance played a huge role. A lucky escape from a flash flood, a bountiful berry season, or a timely alliance could mean survival, misfortune, oblivion. To make this vivid, let's weave in real-life parallels from modern analogs of prehistoric existence. Consider the Hadza people of Tanzania, one of the last hunter-gatherer societies, living in small bands of 20 to 30, foraging across savannas much like our ancestors. In the 1980s, anthropologist Frank Marlowe documented how a single drought year decimated their numbers, with families scattering and some lineages vanishing, echoing those Paleolithic dead ends. Or think of the Sentinelese on North Sentinel Island, isolated for millennia, fiercely guarding their territory. If contact brings disease, as it did for many indigenous groups post-Columbus, wiping out 90% in the Americas, entire populations collapse. These stories humanize the ancient world, a Hadza elder recounting a hunt gone wrong where a wounded elephant trampled kin mirrors the risks behind the Sulawesi pig painting. In the Arctic, Inuit tales of little people, perhaps echoing Neanderthal encounters, passed orally, show how stories preserve knowledge, much like cave art. During the 2010 Eyjafjalla Jokul eruption in Iceland, ash clouds disrupted modern life but imagine prehistoric equivalents. Volcanic winters from Toba 74,000 years ago, blanketing Asia in ash, starving groups and forcing retreats. Survivors, like those in ethnographic accounts from Papua New Guinea after eruptions, huddled in caves, rationing food, their numbers dwindling. These relatable vignettes highlight how precarious life was, turning abstract dates into felt experiences. As we wrap this prehistoric journey, the lesson emerges clear. Our ancestors' story teaches humility in the face of uncertainty. In a world where success seemed far from guaranteed, survival hinged on adaptability, community, and sheer luck, not superiority. Today, as we grapple with climate crises and global challenges, remember those small bands painting pigs and mingling with Neanderthals. Their legacy urges us to foster curiosity cherish diversity, and recognize that humanity's path is woven from fragile threads. By learning from these ancient echoes, we can navigate our own unknowns with resilience and wonder. What prehistoric tale will you uncover next?